Questions? I, I had a question about the self-anxiety that they of, of seeing themselves on video. <coughs> Do they get over that? Uh. Or like, because <laughs> you get used to it, right? The, the more that you Skype or FaceTime or whatever, the more you're like, okay, so this is how I look, this is how I sound, this is that thing I do, my hair. Do they get used to it after? So I think we're trying to help them get used to it by, so this time they'll actually record themselves three times. Okay. Um, and each time they do a little bit more analysis of what they did and the things, basically giving themselves feedback on what they saw. All right. Uh, so we're trying to address that partially through that. Um, I think part of it is just the student population. I mean, they're all graduate students. They're all on their way into a clinical setting. So it's kind of their background is that they want to help people. They don't want to distract. They don't want to make people feel bad. And so I think it's sort of the group of people that we're teaching to do this as well. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, thank you, Kristen, for sharing this project. Um, so I have two questions. Um, one is, have you thought about how you might shorten the video that the student would share with the group? I'm thinking back to that what, one point Right. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of as mind blowing. So that's one question. And my other question, I'll, I'll just ask both of them. Well, anyway, maybe I won't. No, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so we, so with shortening the videos, the we basically have them do the whole assessment tool, and we want them to do that. And the, so we actually did discuss this, the uh, department chair and one of the other faculty members who uses this tool. Uh, the problem with shortening the entire activity or having them not watch the whole video is that you actually, your interviewing style kind of changes as you go through, right? So that first few minutes is a lot of, so how are you, so, I mean, you already told me you're fine, but, um, hang on. Um, <laughs> let, let me just read you what we're going to do. And, well, I mean, I kind of described it already, but, so there's like a weird phase-in period, and you want them to also see that because, I mean, that's going to be real as well, right? You're going to walk into the room, you're going to meet a person for the first time, and there may be cameras on you if this is, in fact, what you're doing. So we didn't want to lose that. And at the same time, there are some people who, by the end, get really casual. And there are some people that, by the end, you can actually see them getting tired. And so they just kind of become less interested. In, yeah, so you said a four? OK. Uh, so no moving on. Hang on. And they'll cut people off and move them to the next thing because they want to be done. They know it's been an hour now. They've seen the clock up on the wall. And, and so we don't want to lose that either so that you get some feedback on the fact that you need to stay there for the whole thing. You need to be present for the entire interview. The beginning is as important as the end. And to just kind of drop off in your attention span doesn't work. I'm also really drawn to this rubric that you created. And are you, could you, you may have mentioned this, but the software that you use to analyze the video data, is that, is it? So they are allowed to do whatever they want. Okay. We have an issue, basically half of our students are on Macs and half of them are on PCs. So. Um, they can do whatever they want to produce a side-by-side -side video. Uh, we give them a couple options. My lab has something called Dartfish. Uh, the problem with Dartfish is it's about $3,000 for a license. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to purchase that. And I have it on one computer in my lab. So 30 students aren't going to all wait to do that. Um, Dartfish is handy because you can put two videos side-by-side -side and it's easier to adjust the time. The timing's always off, right? You don't ever start the videos at the same exact time. so. You have to sync them, otherwise you've got that lip moving, sound not matching thing going on. Um, so they can do whatever they want, and I think John has put a few links in there as far as tools you can use to do that a little bit easier. Um, YouTube actually has a couple handy things. As far as the analysis portion, a lot of people used, uh, there's an uh, annotation tool in YouTube. Um, so you can just post your videos on a private YouTube channel and then go in and do that, and then I just got the link for it. Uh, we also used Kaltura, or um, <coughs> Kaltura, right? Kaltura yeah. Yes. So some students did their side-by-side -side videos, put them on Kaltura. Uh, there's no way to annotate in Kaltura, or at least we didn't find one. So then they just did a Word document with timestamps and told us what to look at and when. So diving into something like you know, Max QDA or the Allocated Data Analysis Tools, that's a pretty big guy. 
Yeah, we didn't want to make it that much of a, at some point I think that could be a cool thing if somebody wanted to look at what's actually happening in the videos to do an actual qualitative analysis of things. But this was more just, you look at it and tell me almost your gut feeling on what you saw happen and then part of the reflection is how you're going to try to address that in the future. Whether it's rather than having the whole sheet in front of you, you just have a note card with some bullet points or you know, make sure you put things down because you're a fidgeter or whatever it is. They had to go through and just think about some of those things. So they, we also left that fairly open. Some people just brought in their polished video and gave it to me on a drive of some sort. You can host them privately on YouTube, so you have to have the link in order to get to it. Uh, Kaltura is handy because the university owns that, and in theory, no one else can get to it. So they would do the same thing. They'd post it and then send me the link to that. Um, some people just downloaded them directly onto the computer I have in my lab. Uh, so we kind of left that open again. Some people went on to Kelter and just couldn't figure it out. So, but they know YouTube. Uh, so if that worked better for them, we just kind of let them get them to us however they wanted to. Uh, as far as the privacy issue goes, we do have everyone, both the students and the people being interviewed, sign a waiver. So they basically, it's this global university legal waiver that says you release your likeness, your voice, your, it's, it's a very carpet. <laughs> uh, it covers everything, basically, like your silhouette from the side projected on a wall. We can use it if we want to. Uh, and it covers, you, it covers uh, digital media, it covers radio, it covers everything. So we have everyone sign that to cover things, but then we do try, obviously, just to keep, you know, even the student that I'll show in a minute here, I asked them a se second time just to make sure that they didn't mind if we shared it. So. say about three quarters of the time they were good at picking up on that too and would say things like interviewing is not my strong suit and I need to work on this. Um, we had one student who, um, I don't know if you want to call it a tick or kind of like his, his just stock response was yeah, 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 no I get that, I get that. And about midway through the client who I believe was a probably somewhere in his 50s, but I believe had a stroke and was fairly impaired. Uh, the client about midway through said, no, you don't. You don't get it at all, man. You don't, you don't know what it's like to not be able to drive when you're 50 years old and you have a kid. And I mean, that feedback was awesome for our student and he had to kind of awkwardly watch it again. Uh, but his reflection on that was great. I mean, it was a big thing for him to see that, so. We had one more. So this semester we'll do it, um, this semester we'll, they will have the GoPros and they will record themselves three times. Yeah, and it kind of iteratively builds up to the final big one where you're there with, again, a person with some sort of pathology. So the first one is just a mock one with each other. Or the first one actually is just getting the cameras out and they do a really short kind of walk through the GoPro together and just practice doing the side-by-side -side thing and all of that. The second one is a mock setup that we do in class. And then the third one is to go out and try it for real. Yep. I'd love to watch that video and, and go through it and sort of see what you're talking about with the rubric. The rubric is on the back of your activity sheet, so um, the idea is that you just kind of fill it out yourself and see if you notice the same things or if you all notice the same things. So we have a graduate student who's working with the Delta program who helped to develop this rubric. Um, and so, like I said, we kind of do a day in class where we just talk about feedback and how important it is to do or not do certain things. Um, so this is just three minutes of this video. And I believe, so on your rubric, the top section is kind of a general overall piece. The middle section is 
feedback that you're giving to, so it, as if you are assessing the young lady on the right doing this right now. And then the last part, which we won't really use in here, is her actually giving you feedback on giving feedback about her feedback. <laughs> uh, so, at us. really, Just the first two seconds. yeah. So, really, the last part is more about her being able to tell you mm -hmm. things like, "Yeah, you clearly felt really weird telling me that I do this thing, and that made it extra weird for me." <laughs> so, uh, that last section we won't really use right now. Takes time. Um, and then for leisure, um, I wrote down that you're having a little bit of trouble painting with the. Carving's going pretty well. You have adapted, or you have some tools that you yeah, can that, that help. Just um, change tools, and the sizes, and so forth, and, and that helps a lot. That's good. <coughs> um, I wrote down reading was tough, holding a book, so, mm -hmm. um, but it's going okay right now. Before, <coughs> before I had the surgery, even even resting my arms. go through the thing or what oh, format would you like to go with? I, I only made two notes on that. I thought she did a pretty good job. But others? <laughs> yeah, that was one of them. He's she just kind of kept going off the list and it looked like he wanted to talk and she was kind of looking down and not seeing if he wanted to. Yeah. Uh, so I actually picked this because she pointed that out. Um, I think one thing we'll find this year is that I think the students are going to be way harder on themselves than people giving feedback are going to be on them. But she really pushed a lot the fact that in watching this, she had no idea how much she talks over someone or how she's kind of finishing his sentences on occasion for him. Mm -hmm. And even though she knows what he's going to say, she needs to just shut up and let him say it, uh, which was great insight from her. I, th I mean, she's trying to just have a conversation, but you can see how she cuts him off a few times. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the, she is moving pretty fast through this portion. This is actually the, we're 30 minutes into it right now, so this is kind of the summary part where we, you go back and ask him to rate things. Um, so she's sort of restating things that they've already talked about loosely, um, but yeah, she is moving pretty quick. From the OT perspective, one thing she pointed out, so 
the feeding question there at the end. <laughs> Obviously, that's pretty important. Um, so that's more of a wording issue. What she's really trying to get at is she, he has issues with his hands, right? So the question is, can an OT help him actually get food from a place into his mouth easier, right? So it's not that <laughs> eating isn't important, mm -hmm. because obviously it is. Uh, so that piece and the way she nuanced that as an occupational therapist is something that she mentioned that she would like to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said it did get kind of awkward there because obviously you should eat this. How important is eating? <laughs> Real important. <laughs> 10 point scale, I'd go with 18. <laughs> this was a spot where like, this is her biggest smile that I saw in the three minutes. And so it really, like it, it was awkward, but it was also a really wonderful place for them to connect over the awkwardness. Yeah, and they do actually, he goes on and they laugh for a minute about it and then kind of go to work about, he's a little more open and uh, grandma walks in the room right after this though, so I cut it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, yep, so that's the first thing that they do is go through and give them self-feedback. So they use it in kind of two different ways. One as a giving feedback to a peer, but also first as giving feedback basically to yourself. One of the things that I was thinking about to uh, avoid the 19 or 1.9 million hours of, of video is um, either not have them create a highlight reel because that would be too much or have them create even a three minute thing, but say, um, do they give you a document along with the video that says, check out at you know 2.33, I do this, check out at, and, and that way you can just quickly jump to those highlights rather than watch the whole thing? Yeah, so that's kind of what we're working with is they'll get feedback on the whole thing from their peer. And then what we'll do is evaluate both based on what the peer said and what they said, what they want us to look at, right. and we can go to those directly. We're trying to get them to not just use that as a, here, let me point out all the things I did wrong. Yeah. Uh, because we want to make sure to, I mean, there's great stuff in there too. Yeah. And a lot of the feedback we ended up giving was, you did a great job of, yeah. because the feedback they gave themselves was so, mm -hmm. uh, my hair was terrible, and I do that lip thing. and. They, <laughs> So to try to get them out of it just being a negative thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Uh, well, let's jump, let's do some hands-on stuff. So look at your activity sheet on the other side. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to stop the discussion on the rubric. I did have a question, though. Um, you, you seem to say that you just suggested this sort of mixed reviews on this, on the initial use. Of so it. we didn't use the rubric last time. No, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And, but you seem to really solve a lot of those issues, or at least preemptively are, are working towards solving the 1.9 million dollars. You're going to have people peer review it. You're going to have a technology base. There's a lot of loss in technology. Uh, you're going to have, um, and you're going to take time to really um, look at the, the rubric and stuff. Okay. You seem to be solving a lot of those initial problems. So what are what are the downsides you're seeing in, in the future? Because I'm not seeing any right now. I'm thinking this is really a really great tool, a really great We awesome. hope so. What, yeah. what are you seeing though in the so we're in the middle of it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a day one uh, technology day, which seemed to actually, I was worried that it would kind of be a lull, that they're going to look at this and be like, yeah, it's a GoPro. Uh, but it was, they're afraid of them to a certain extent. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's kind of an expensive thing in their mind and they don't want to break it. And even the case, I mean, it's a, a waterproof case, so it opens hard. Sure. And yeah. even that idea is a little overwhelming when you first play with them. Um, but instead of it being a lab where I thought we would spend 15 minutes and then everyone would be like, yeah, so you're old and we're not, and this is easy. We spent an hour sure. taking them out and playing with the memory cards and figuring out how to do stuff. So that went really well. Uh, the feedback lecture was actually exceptionally well received by both faculty and students. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're in the middle of it. So I may be back next year to tell you that it all fell on its face, <laughs> but it, it seems like it's going well. And working with Delta and one of their students has been really, like the, they helped to develop a lot of that metric. And because they've got a nice cohort there, they could bounce things off of each other. So it's, it's been vetted by, you know, real people, as opposed to us just writing it, testing it, bringing it back. They looked at it, they went through it. So, so far I would say, I mean, I, I do think it's a great tool. And I think that for what we're doing with it, Hopefully, it's going to be really helpful. In your mind, is it accomplishing the learning objectives you set out? 
I, so what they did previously was basically just read about how to do this thing, uh, and they didn't even really administer it because there was no way for us to be there to see it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think that what we wanted to do with them, we've seen kind of over and above. Uh, it's also helpful because they can carry these videos through. The, they do this as second semester, first year students. Sure. So they've got more time to look at it and learn from it, and maybe they interviewed a person with Parkinson's disease and now that they know more about what that actually is, here are some other things I would have done during that. So they have the ability to go back and look at them again. It, is it worth, I'm sorry, I, is it worth the cost? I mean, I mean, I don't know how much they are, but I mean, is it worth the setup cost to buy the GoPros, to buy the tech, or invest in that technology, invest in the other, the time in class, is it been worth the, the effort? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's the bottom line, right? Uh, I think on the GoPro end, I. I would say without hesitation it is. The, the nice part again, it was a grant, right? So it didn't come out of our pocket. Sure. <laughs> um, but we've used them for other things too. So we had a group of students go study abroad uh, to do a field experience so they could take them with and bring them back and now show the incoming first year students, here's what it was like in a third world company, or country, company. <laughs> uh, when they say OT, what they mean is literally they have kids aspirating on food. They put something in their mouth and the child is a step away from death, and they need someone in that room to help with that. That's not what we do when we're <laughs> giving you, you know, a fancy new bike to use because you have the same exact pathology. So the GoPros we've used for other things as well now, and it's been awesome. Um, I think if we can cut down on the time, uh, the labor-intensive issue of analyzing this particular project, even in the end, with a week's worth of time to settle in on it, I think they got a lot out of it, and I think we can continue to improve it. So I didn't second guess that we would have them, just a hopefully an improved version yeah. this semester. Um, you can also use like oh, yeah. these or every right. laptop now has a, a built-in GoPro for, that would be suitable for an interview. You know, unless you're craning down a, a hill. <laughs> and, and, she, and you seem to be suggesting both of those worth the time as well, not just yeah. in, in, in both of them. I think it's been yeah, it's been learning, right? It's the again naive, jump into the fire and then figure it out. I, it had I sought out people who know about teaching things beforehand, I probably would have done a better job first time around. Um, but even that, I don't think it was a wasted effort. I think it will just be continuously better as we learn and move. Uh, I would say it was kind of 50-50. Uh, some of them took off, right? Like, this is awesome, and it's what they want to do, and it's cool. Uh, I would say I, that was kind of the other labor-intensive part, was I ended up sitting with, yes, and my TA wasn't necessarily, this isn't her thing, so it was me, um, with a, a lot of them. <laughs> uh, how do I download the video? How do I process the video? How do I cut the video? How do I do all these? Oh, somehow in between it made two videos. How do I make two videos into one video and then still get them side by side? Um, so that definitely is a piece as well. So did you build that in more? So now we've got a better sheet to help them. So if you have absolutely no idea what to do, I suggest this tool. And you know, why don't you start with this? And if you want to go do other things, great. Um, like I said, the thing that I have in my lab, the Dirtfish software, is actually really handy. You just have to be there to do it. So now, if you're in that, I don't know where to start, yeah. thing, you need to find a time to come in and sit there at that computer and do it. Uh, and, and for this, they had to do a fair amount of editing? Uh, not really editing. They had to crop things. So there were some times where they'd accidentally start the camera and there'd be five minutes of you know, chit-chatting with grandma about shoe shopping. Yeah. So they would have to cut it. Yeah. But other than that, it's played beginning to end. So there's not really any video editing per se okay. in between. It's just learning to load the videos up, figuring out how to do them side by side, and then however you want to annotate it. Which again, if you want to, use a pen and paper. Just tell me the time to look at. And I, I wonder if there's a way to get the students to help each other, because you said some of them took off and knew exactly what to do, and others Stuff, but that's a, a way to build community in the classroom is to say, who knows how to do this stuff? And then all of a sudden they become you know, the most popular person in the class. <laughs> <laughs> but we can easily look at some of these things. Um, and let's, before we do that, let's, so this was occupational therapy, and it was interviewed in brain, uh, with the GoPro cameras. Any other occupational therapists out here today? No? Okay. How can you use this? What kinds of ways can you use, I think specifically a, a two point or two perspective video, side by side video, are there, are we, Margaret, 
John and I, we found, but for some reason it didn't make the list, was um, we found some videos that showed a tennis serve side by side, so you can like put your video of your tennis serve next to like Kevin Federer's tennis serve and like <laughs> see how you do, right? So like what do I need to improve because I can look at an expert performance next to my performance. So it's sports. That was another one that didn't make the list. That's actually what the expensive software is for. Oh, really? Uh, is to do performance-based analysis. So like the, uh, in the Winter Olympics where you see the one skier and then the next guy goes and you want to know how far ahead or behind, uh -huh. this allows you to do that overlay thing oh. so you can see the one guy do the other or do side by side and link things together. And So we have a glass blowing project where we have two people side by side. Uh, and you can see the professional, or you know, the instructor here, and how beautifully she does this thing, and then you see you doing this. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not even bending your elbow, and mm -hmm. she's got this fluid, dynamic thing that she's doing. Uh, so we use it for that. They're both side by side, and we can actually analyze the angles. And that oh, wow. Yeah. So this is the not as expert stuff, right? See it's up oh, yeah, you're right. Well, we just had like sports and art we talked yeah. about. Anyway. Yeah, multiple perspectives, and in an art thing was the other one um, that somebody had, I want to say, also from glass blowing, had, you know, for a technique, you might be able to <coughs> perspective of it, but it looks a lot different from another angle, or, or here's what's happening with the glass, and here's what's happening with the, the person. Yeah, so that, that. that's how and Lee in the glass program. Okay. So we're working on those things actually together uh, as part of a different piece, but cool. yeah. It is really, I think it's insightful to them to see it, and this has nothing to do with our thing that we're using it for, but to see the actual perspective of the person you're trying to talk to. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and I think teaching's a good example. If I tend to talk to these two people the whole time and I've never made eye contact with the back of the room, I'm sure at some point in time, if you had that thing on your head, you would, you know, be doing Facebook and whatever. Right. <laughs> and maybe it would just make people not do Facebook in classes. <laughs> <laughs> thing uh, that in this case may make the GoPro be the thing uh, for something like that and you guys can play with these as much as you like but it has a super fisheye lens so um, it's not gonna load now of course but basically it can be right here and it's still getting my entire face sure. um, and actually that video that's why they're so far away is she didn't change it from the fisheye setting um, I mean the cameras are right here and it's that broad of a picture um, so it would be super handy I would think to get you know, like right up underneath an engine or something. And any kind of system thing like that where you're changing something here and you want to see how it impacts it here, if you can't be in two places at once, then to be able to show those two perspectives, that's a great. For the screenshot here with the YouTube URLs, 
Yeah, we were underneath the Lord of the Rings and Red. This was the we didn't talk about was looking at the original trailer versus the remastered high res trailer <laughs> and, and seeing what <coughs> there. But I did that in the um, the swigview.com. And so now I'm actually going to do a live demo here with the YouTube multiplier, um, which is also different. This one has the start session, so you can say, don't start it until 20 seconds to help with that, getting the timing <coughs> quite right. But all I did right here is I just put in three YouTube URLs from our active teaching lab, previous things in it. Should be here, so we'll put all three of them set aside. And you can combine up to eight? Oh my <sighs> gosh. Which would be a nuts. little overwhelming. Which would be like, <laughs> which would be like all the Lord of the Rings movies and the Hobbit movies playing at the same right. time. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. So I'm sorry that I missed this. Is this creating a channel? What, what, what's this doing here? What this will do, I think, and I, this is the first time that I've tried this. Let's do the name of the mashup. It, yeah, it's a really long name, name for this mashup. one. Please make sure that. Please have to give it a numbers. twenty character name. Oh, yeah, we played with uh, this one too. Video of three things. Yeah. One, right? yeah, you need the you need the please copy these numbers right above the preview button. It's the it's oh, the seven eight the yeah. captcha thing. So not only is this a live demo, but live demo of software I just opened up from <laughs> ten minutes ago. All right, so here we have it. And does it start all through at the same time? It oh. starts them on your leg. <laughs> so. Pretty cool. And then, yeah, I could adjust that then after the preview. And now we have all three of them. I think they're all muted. I see three like speaker one. buttons right under the middle video. I see three speaker buttons. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Two, of, two of them have X's, one of them has an X. I'm not sure that you published it yet, but so if you wanted to stop and pause and watch one of the videos, you're allowed to do that. Yeah, so this particular one, we had some students play with this. So you can hit play and it should simultaneously start everything. Or you can play, you can click on one video and play just that one if you needed to All see. Right. You know, I thought I saw myself do a thing. I want to go back and look at that, but I don't need to watch the person's response. So the, the, yeah, the other one that I used was um, the swig view. But to do this, it's super easy. Question. Yeah, yeah sorry. So if you put the two or three videos together uh, using this software, yep. can you sync them so that the time, like? That's where. There's that little thing over on the right side. It says something like delay time. Time or the start seconds. This part here. So if this one was a little bit quicker, you could change the start time by two seconds or whatever. And so that's... So start it at the perfect. second time of the video, start it at the second second of the video and the other two are going to start at the first second of the video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that what you were asking? Okay. Yeah. So then, like, the, if you switched on the, um, the volume on both YouTube and the time, like, you would be watching people doing the conversation? Yes. Okay. That's the idea. Yeah. And one of the, um, there's a good example of that in the, um, so this swing view one has playlists. And the Lord of the Rings is one of the ones on the playlist up here that's going to show up, I think. Fellowship of the Ring yeah, trailer. Third one down. Oh, was it? Oh, Fellowship of the Ring trailer. So this is where I got the screenshot for the I believe. 
Looks like the one on the right is muted and the one on the left is not or something. Oops. Okay, there is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new Lord of the Rings soundtrack. <laughs> You're hearing both of them, that's true. Right. And it's kind of an interesting thing because in the remastered trailers, the audio track is the same even though the video is a little bit different. So, I don't know, is that useful? Is that something you can, would be an interesting thing in the, the class or not? <laughs> Produce the media and post it there, though. You can produce media and post it, just as you can in YouTube. It's the same thing. You can't create it in YouTube, but you can take the URLs and create it in some other. Thing. I don't know if we have other school of education faculty, staff, or students here, but the Merit Library does have GoPros for checkout. I wanted to just throw them on there. So what you see here is that if, or if you're enrolled in a school event class, they're there. 